This interview episode is brought to you by G-Tops. Why would you want to lose the freedom of your Freedom Tops? Jeep developed the Freedom Top through years of design and testing. Quick on, quick off, no leaking, and easy to store. The unbreakable G-Top panels installed in the Freedom Tops make the cabin quieter, stronger, and lighter. Clear see-through tops with no visual distortion. Some other tops not only distort your view, they act as a drum. That's bass you do not want in your Jeep. Check out the G-Tops today at gtops.com. That's J-E-E-T-O-P-S dot com. Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, the talk show where we talk about all things Jeep, from trail riding to overlanding and everything in between. Every Friday, we have an interview with a new and exciting guest. So sit back, grab a cold one, and get ready for another great guest right here on the Jeep Talk Show. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. You know, it was a lot of fun talking to uh, to, to to this guest, and uh, I'm sure I'm not breaking any uh, fourth wall here. You guys know that uh, we record these things so. Uh, uh, in in advance, so uh, it just makes it easier for the uh, the guest because we can schedule a time uh, when it's good for them to, to record this. So, uh, but I, I was and I've, I've mentioned this on a few other episodes. I was really excited to hear that in Germany you can actually do a lot more than what I thought you could. Uh, I mean, it's just me. I'm I'm an American. I'm one of the typical Americans. If it's not America, I don't uh, I don't follow up on it. So. Uh, and, and I think I've sta- stated this before. I think this is one of our first uh, international guests. Um, ex- and if not a first international guest, at least an international guest that has a company uh, that's uh, uh, not an American-based company. Of course, they do have uh, uh, outlets here in America where you can buy directly from them. Uh, I know Dan, uh, Dan Grek, uh, the, the road shows me, uh, he's definitely international, but... Uh, I guess he's got a business, doesn't he? Yeah, I guess so. So uh, maybe, maybe Dan Greg, if he's if he listens to the show, probably is going, "Hey, I got an accent. I've been on your show." <laughs> the Jeep Dog Show. It's not about us. It's about you, the listeners. It's Tim from Torrance. Hey Jeepers, this is uh, Rob San Antonio, Texas. Hey guys, it's Cody with TrailChasers.net with another grand adventure. Hey guys, this is Cody from Indiana. Yoo-hoo. Hello Jeep Talk Show crew, this is FJ Rick. Hi guys, this is Joe. If a turtle doesn't have a shell, is he naked or homeless? Hey guys, this is Ron out in Arizona. Hey, hey what's up? Jeep Talk Show, this is Jason, Oregon Trail Off-Road. Hi. This is Jake from California, and I'm sitting here eating pork rinds for breakfast. Hey, this is uh, PAG Free. Hey, Tony, Josh, Danny, it's XJ, Jake Collin. This is John, Free Runner in 1982, and on today's Radio Context segment, I'm going to talk about APRS, an anal probe restraint system. No! No. No, no. That's not right. We love our listeners. I love that promo. I think I played that last Friday as well, so sorry about that, but I... <laughs> I always enjoy it. <laughs> From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. How to neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. All righty, boys and girls, it's time for the Jeep Talk Show interview. And tonight we're going to be talking with Patrick. Patrick, you're going to have to pronounce the name of the business for me at least once. Yeah, we are, I'm Patrick from the company OSD in, in Germany, in Munich. And uh, now we are also located in the States. Um, uh, we have uh, the company OSD and we have our own brand. Bavarian, Bavarian. that's what I couldn't, that's what the, I had. I, I, no, I, have a, I, I have a guess, but I'm sure it was wrong. So Patrick has been involved in the Jeep world with the QRZ company for 28 years now. You don't look like you're even 28 years old. 11 years ago, he launched his own own brand, uh, Bawarian, I think I got it right, to develop his own Jeep parts uh, because, in his opinion, stuff on the market just wasn't good enough. So many people that I've talked to here started companies exactly for that reason is because the stuff that was available they thought was better, and and now they're very uh, doing very well because of it. So I think you're on the right track. 
Uh, Bowarian is one of the strongest players in, the, in Europe and currently introducing its revolutionary 4.5 inch suspension, super strong alloy, alloy wheels. Uh, it's going to be one of those days. And more uh, to the American market. Uh, Patrick, thank you a lot for uh, for being here. Now, uh, if you can't tell from uh, Patrick's uh, accent already, um, he's in Munich. So this is a company in Europe. It, it just goes to show you that the Internet really is worldwide. Patrick, thanks for being here today. Yeah, we are, we are located in Munich, and uh, the parts of what we do, they're developed not just from uh, Germans. It's also it's a combination with uh, Germans and uh, with Americans. So our uh, engineer is uh, actually an American guy. And, uh, well, our goal is, uh, for every product that we build, is our goal that we have um, the best what you can get. So the, the strongest or, or the best or however uh, depends on what we what we build. And uh, the first, what we began was um, wheels. The problem on wheels is to, to get it, uh, to, you, you know what TÜV is? No, TUV. I don't. So it's it's a company in uh, in Europe, and they allow you to use the parts uh, what uh, what you want to use on the street. So they make it legal. Ah. So uh, you're not allowed to to change any part on your Jeep uh, without their their allowance. So you get a document what allows you to uh, to use another kind of wheels or bigger tires really? or uh, suspension or bumper front or rear bumper tire carrier and so on uh, you have to get an allowance from uh, from the TOV and um, on the one side it's it's a bad thing because you cannot do what you want on the other side it's uh, pretty good because um, in this way if you get the allowance then you have something what you're really allowed to use so uh, if you compare it to uh, to most uh, Areas of uh, in uh, in America, you you can do something on your car, but if you use it and uh, there is an accident, then it's uh, pretty strange to uh, oh, yeah to come out. And uh, yeah, that's different. What we have in uh, in Europe, um, if you are allowed to use something, then you are officially allowed. And uh, but therefore you have to get some tests. So for wheels. Um, uh, for ex uh, for example, you have to say what what is the maximum tire, and with that maximum tire, they make the tests. And if everything is okay, then you get the allowance. Now, this to, isn't on a case by case basis, right? I mean, if you if you develop a wheel and the T TUV, I think you said, if they approve it, then the customer doesn't have to go through that. It's it's already T TUV approved, and they can put it on their vehicle. Is that correct? Okay, good. Yes, so at least they, it doesn't have to be done. Because uh, I was mentioning before we started, I think it's Australia where they they make you have an engineer go through the process for your specific vehicle, and that's that's just a pain in the ass. Nobody's got time for that. So at least this puts the onus back on the company that's selling the product, and then once it's approved, it's kind of like a DOT approved here in the states. So if it's the Department of Transportation approved, then you're okay. Uh, now we don't always use DOT approved stuff on our jeeps on the road, but there you go. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you are, uh, for example, you're not allowed to use uh, beadlock wheels on the street. There's an argument. There's an we argument are. about that. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. So the TUV actually approved beadlocks? That's interesting. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, we, we tested it. Uh, uh, so we what we did is we tested our wheels. We have uh, we have standard wheels and we have all the beadlock wheels. And we tested our beadlock wheels in combination with 39-inch tires. And uh, so we are officially allowed uh, using 39 inch tires on a beadlock wheel on the street. That's and and that's a big difference to. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Well, here in Texas, I think that the, the, the limitation is your headlights can't, okay, can't, be, uh, can't be over 54 inches uh, high. And, you, and there's a, a, a limit on how low you can go to. So you can run some pretty big vehicles here in Texas. Uh, but uh, no, that's great. And this is this is brand new news to me. I had no idea. And and I don't know if if it's right or not. But I think at least my standpoint, as far as I think of Germany, I think of things being very strict. And it, it amazes me to hear that you guys can use beadlock tires and thirty. I mean beadlock wheels and thirty nine inch tires. That's really cool. And uh, you you shouldn't compare it to Texas because <laughs> Texas is very special. But but. 
you can compare it to California. Oh God! So and, um, <laughs> see what what you know, what they're allowed to yeah, do in California. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, but I have to compare it to Texas. I'm a Texan. Um, so, uh, but yeah, no, but I mean, it's great. I mean, that's great that you guys can do that because that's the kind of freedom that we see here in Texas. Um, so, uh, now you, you guys started out with wheels, right? Uh, and, uh, oh, I know what I was going to ask you. So the beadlocks, one of the problems with the beadlocks is keeping all those bolts tight. Did the TV have you do something or, or did you guys design something so that you don't have to always constantly check? Uh, to make sure those bolts are tight? Yep. Well, um, we, have, we have installation instruction that says uh, that you have to uh, uh, to approve um, the bolts uh, every year, one time. And uh, But honestly, we don't have any any issues with uh, with our bolts. It's a, it's our own brand, what we have. So all the beadlocks, we, we don't use any uh, an existing wheel. It's, uh, it's our own wheel, what uh, would be de developed and uh, it looks pretty good. Pretty now, good. I, can, I can hear people screaming at me. They're saying, oh, well, these are fake beadlocks. They're faux beadlocks. These are actual honest-to-goodness beadlocks over the outside of the wheel, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the locking ring holding the bead. It's, it's, one, it's one beadlock ring, so uh, not on, on both sides. Right. It's just on the outside. And, uh, when we use uh, uh, 20 millimeters, so... Uh, almost one inch uh, uh, thick uh, beadlock ring and uh, with 24 screws and or bolts and that you uh, mm -hmm. that that's very really nice good. that's really cool so let me ask you something the thing that's always concerned me about uh, being a wheel manufacturer I mean if, if I was going to do something like that I'd be very nervous at how because you see sometimes there's not a lot of metal there and I know I know there's science and physics and stuff you got to figure out but it's got to be very interesting from a liability standpoint that you make a wheel that's going to stay together and not break because that's going to be a devastating, potentially devastating accident. Is this something that you guys uh, were concerned about when you first started making wheels? No, yeah, of course, because uh, we had to let the test from TOV. Uh, they made all the tests. Uh, they tested if it, if it can break or not. And uh, they also um, tested with the maximum tire size, what we say. So uh, if we say uh, we want to use a 39 inch tire, for example, then they, uh, they make the test with a 39 inch tire. So uh, they make a rolling test and they make a, 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 a test with a, well, I don't know the English word for that. Um, so, uh, they simulate uh, going over a, over, over a big, mm. uh, big rock um, with, uh, with zero air in the tire and uh the wheel is not allowed to break for example you can bend a little bit but it's uh, not allowed <laughs> that's to good break. i'm glad you could they could you could bend it some so but uh, you guys have uh, do you guys do steel wheels as as well as alloy because i don't think the alloy bend very well yeah no we also uh, we only use uh, alloy wheels no, no, steel. Uh, no steel. Uh, well, very cool. So now I was actually surprised. I've never, uh, I didn't know about your company until uh, recently. And you guys have quite a collection of things. I mean, and you, and, and quite a collection for, for Jeeps. I mean, you have uh, stuff for the LJ, the JK, uh, the JT. Uh, so, uh, and you guys have been doing this for quite a while. Uh, and, and like I said, it's all new to me. I think it's absolutely wonderful that there's a European company it's learning this Jeep sickness, or not even learning it, but been in, involved in this Jeep sickness for so long. Um, so uh, are you a Jeeper? Do you have, personally have a Jeep? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> so what Jeep do you have? No. Or Jeeps? Uh, well, uh, my, yeah, that's, uh, that's correct. Um, my, first, my first Jeep was a 95 YJ, and I, uh, I still have it. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we built in uh, uh, a, eight, uh, a Ranch at 502, um, a Chevy uh -huh. engine, okay. and, uh, and the car is now it's in the States for off-roading. And uh, my daily driver is a uh, Wrangler uh, a 392 <laughs> with 39-inch yeah. tires, of course. And also I, I built for, for myself, I built a, a Gladiator with a Hellcat engine. Oh well, my goodness, that's that great. Now, uh, I think I asked you earlier if you guys are going to be at EJS. Are you personally going to be at EJS this year? I will will one of these course, vehicles yeah. be there? Or is this going to be a company vehicle that you we, have there? No, we have, we have uh, a standard uh, GL there. 
Um, we have a little booth uh, at the uh, ETS, and uh, our display car is a, uh, is a JL um, with 39s and a Gladiator with uh, Very nice. Now, are you also. just going to be in the booth, or are you going to be out in the trails? The JL uh, will be in the, in the trail with me, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and because you know you can't go to Moab and not actually get out on the trails a little bit, you know. So that's uh, yeah. Yeah. No, how, no how, way. how many times have <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, been there? You've been going there for a long time. Uh, is the Jeep Safari or, or a Moab? So the mean? Easter Jeep Safari is in Moab, and uh, the Easter Jeep Safari yeah, the okay. end of this month, uh, the end of March. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, we're going to be out there We're actually the Jeep talk show team will be out there. Several team members and several listeners, uh, will be out there and I'm going as well. So it's my third time at the Easter Jeep Safari and, uh, Moab, I, I think I've been there 20 times. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So I'm glad to hear you're going to be yeah. on the trails. So hopefully we'll get to, to meet up. I'm actually doing some, uh, scheduling up some interviews, at least scheduling from the standpoint uh, we're both going to be there. Let's uh, let's get together. I uh, got some cameras set up in the Gladiator that I'm going to try to do some uh, some just brief interviews with. So uh, maybe we can find each other out on the trails and uh, and do an interview there as well as uh, as this one. Mm-hmm. All right. So now yeah. the wheels are only part of the story, and of course I'm blown away that you guys are, are doing beadlocks and they're they're actually legal <laughs> where you guys are. Yeah, the, the, the wheels the wheels was not just uh, a part of the story; it's the beginning of the story. Because our wheels uh, has been the first uh, thing would be made with, with our brand name Bavorian. And uh, well, the, the reason was because it, it, it was not, uh, not possible to, to get uh, TÜV approved wheels in Europe um, with the uh, correct uh, dimensions and the correct offset. So that was the reason why we uh, thought about uh, making mm-hmm. our own wheels. And uh, yeah, and after that, one comes to the other. Then we uh, the next step. I think I think pretty uh, pretty close to that. The next step was uh, a trailer hitch receiver. Uh, it sounds very easy, but uh, it wasn't actually because um, w- since we since we had lifted uh, cheats in uh, in Europe, we also wanted to uh, the guys who who owned the cheats. They also wanted to have heavy trailers, but uh, with a Three or four or five inch uh, suspension kit on a JK it was not so easy to uh, to trail a, a, a big trailer, and um, yeah, and therefore we we made a own development uh, for uh, getting a really good thing because um, the original uh, trailer hitch. Uh, I don't know if you if you know that the the frame the the rear frame of the Jeep is a, a two part uh, frame. And uh, the original hitch only goes up to the welding. And uh, if you have a heavy trailer, then uh, the frame cracks uh, simply often. And that's why we made a change and we uh, made it bigger. And uh, also uh, we uh, went a little bit more down to, uh, to get a better, better angle. And, and now it works. So we, we got it also to be proofed, of course. And I think it's the strongest uh, hitch uh, for cheap. So when you say the the frame uh, b- uh, breaks or cracks, uh, is this where the mount uh, is, or along t- closer up to the the front of the Jeep? I mean, the front of where, where you sit. The, where um, does the crack happen? Is, I guess is what I'm asking. In the in the rear frame between gotcha. the two parts, the, the welding and yeah, there that makes sense. Breaks. Um, I, cause I've seen some stuff like with Toyotas where, uh, like especially Toyota trucks when they have do too heavy of a load, uh, the, 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 uh, the frame actually will bend and break. And I was hoping that's not what you were talking about. So this is just where the mount is. So, uh, now you were telling me something earlier about the gladiator, uh, the, the European gladiator compared to the U S gladiator, that there was some some different strengths involved between the two, which I find very interesting that there would be a difference. Yeah, we have, a, I told you that we have a trailer edge receiver and uh, we made it in a, in a style that it also fits onto the Gladiator, but um, the maximum towing weight is not possible uh, with a European frame. So also the, uh, the frame of the um, US Gladiator, when you did not order the maximum, maximum Max tow, uh, right. Towing, exactly. Um, we tested it. We tested the frame, 
um, they, they put it on the rig and, and, and they test uh, two millions uh, of mm-hmm. uh, vibrations. And it's correct. And uh, therefore, we have to use uh, the US frame. Um, it's the only one frame that really um, is strong enough to, uh, to, to use a Do you know trailer. what the difference is? Why the, a different frame was used in Europe? Is it a weight savings that they were trying to do? or I don't exactly know uh, what it is, but uh, for sure it's, uh, it's more heavy. The frame part, it's uh, about two or three kilograms more. And so mm-hmm. it's more thick. Yeah, well, that, that makes a lot of difference. I find that really, really unusual. Little things like this that uh, we probably wouldn't know uh, in uh, in America otherwise. So I'm glad you glad you mentioned that. Um, so uh, out of uh, uh, so you guys, like I was saying before, you have uh, uh, products for the JK, uh, the JL, JLU, and the, the JT Gladiator. Um, is was there any? I mean, you've got a YJ. Uh, there t- there's lots, still lots of TJs around. Were, was there any thought in having uh, coming out with something for the YJs and the TJs? I mean, I know from a marketing standpoint, there's not as many as those, and you want to sell to the largest market. But uh, yeah, was there mm-hmm. was there any thought? Did you guys have anything for those vehicles when the uh, when you first started? Um, maybe some wheels if you if you do a, a, a an extra sweat, but. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you like I said, you're going with the biggest part of the market. So the market, the market is too yeah, small yeah. in the meantime. So, uh, but uh, and, and uh, are you still guys uh, guys still happy with the JK market, or is it getting smaller as well? No, it's pretty pretty good. The J, uh, JN JT is uh, currently the biggest market, but uh, mm-hmm. so uh, how how popular are Jeeps? Uh, in your area, I mean, obviously, you're you're not just selling in Germany and in the United States. I'm sure you uh, other places that you can sell your products in Europe. I'm sure you're doing that as well. Uh, but how popular are Jeeps there in Germany? It's pretty popular. So um, it is. Uh, it's actually a problem to to get the many uh, cars what uh, what people want to have. The only one problem is uh, from now because. Uh, they now offer only the four by E Wranglers. Oh yeah, and uh, it's the most ex- expensive one. And also, uh, nobody wanna wanna have a three hundred kilogram battery and and uh, on right. the gear bank. So, um, how did you go about getting the the vehicles you have? And how did you go about? Well, how did you get a three ninety two? That had to be. You must have had to jump through some hoops to get a three ninety two over there. Yeah, the reason. Uh, the, the really reason why we, why I have it is because we had to uh, to develop an, an exhaust mm-hmm. system for it um, because uh, the, the original system was too loud for the European market. <laughs> oh no! And oh. Why, yeah, and that why, why we got one to to make an exhaust system uh, was actually louder, but uh, than the original one. But um, it's with the, with the clap. And uh, where it has to be uh, not so loud, there it is not so loud. So it's, oh, I uh, like numbers. that. Yeah, it's like the uh, like uh, open headers or not. You have the little things that you can flip open. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> uh, I, we have uh, one of our team members, uh, uh, Bill, has a three ninety two, and I was saying, Bill, you're going to get those little things. You press a button and you're you're, you're uncapped, and you can just uh, run it loud. Uh, he's like, he just smiles real big. Says, no, 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 no. but uh, we'll see. What do you what do you think about the the Jeep no longer making the three ninety two? Uh, this I think this is the final year for the three ninety two uh, JLU. That's sad. It is. It's absolutely sad. Uh, it, it, not not just for not just for the Wrangler, also for all the uh, other V eights. So um, have a look on on the on the Ram or on the Charger or Challenger. Yeah. I mean, I hear that that uh, that straight six that uh, the Hurricane engine. I hear that it's very good. Actually, we were talking about Greg Henderson earlier, uh, and I think I can talk about this. Greg actually test drove a couple of vehicles uh, that had the Hurricane engine before they actually released it, and uh, they they had really tuned the hell out of that thing. He said it was badass. So, you know, I guess if you get the torque and you get the horsepower, uh, it, it's fine, but there's something about a V8 sound that you, you, can't, you can't do. It's just no, no matter how hard you try. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier I've got a, a 98 Cherokee, and uh, it's not certainly not a V8, but it has a sound to it. That 4.0 has a sound to it, and I miss that of the Gladiator. The Gladiator's great, but I miss that sound. It has a GP sound to me. Yeah. That's it. That's it. 
All right, yeah. so now uh, the, we've we've talked about wheels. Uh, you do alloy wheels. You got bead locks. You got non bead locks. Uh, anything else? Uh, anything else special to mention about the the wheels? Did I tell you uh, something about our uh, suspension? No, no, no. Kit? But we were talking about wheels. We got. Uh, we're going to talk about that other stuff uh, next. But if you want to get into suspension, that's fine. I find it interesting that you don't have a two inch lift. You just go straight to four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, we we wanted to. Uh, I, I told you we, we tested our wheel for right. thirty nine inch tires, uh, but uh, for using the thirty nine inch tires, you uh, you need the height of the car. So uh, <laughs> and it now becomes close uh, to the next. Uh, therefore, we had to use a, a four and a half inch suspension, and that would mm-hmm. be difficult. Oh, we like to say no modification goes unpunished here, and sometimes the punishment is getting more stuff. So that you can use the stuff you put on there, or you want to fit the stuff on there. So four and a half inch lift uh, on a, I mean, for example, I got the Mopar uh, two inch lift, uh, and I did that so I could maintain my warranty. Uh, I mean, four and a half inch lift sounds wonderful to me. I, I love that idea of it. Uh, my my five foot two inch wife, who would still be able to get in the Gladiator because she would figure it out, but that she would be very challenged to get up in that. She's got a, a TJ with a four and a half inch lift uh, on it, and uh, she can get in there. But uh, four and a half, how did you guys come up with four and a half? Was it the 39 inch tires you were trying to, to make sure fit? Well, um, I said, so if you have the time, it's uh, the Easter cheap surprise. So come over to our booth and then we can, uh, we can drive around. And then you know what I mean. Because um, uh, we developed a four and a half inch suspension, which runs uh, way better uh, on the street, uh, off road, of course, but also on the street, uh, way better than your uh, uh, two inch suspension. Or almost uh, with the with the stock suspension, it's uh, it drives like a sports car, and uh, I, I don't tell you lies. It's uh, it's fact. So you have to come over. So and nothing, test no it. changes to the steering. Uh, that we're just talking about suspension here, uh, uh, with coil springs, uh, and uh, what what all what all. Let's just ask that. What is what is your suspicion suspension kit include? Well. Um, Regarding the steering, we also use uh, uh, new knuckles at the front, and so we have a high steer mm-hmm. suspension in the, in the front. And uh, all the the springs, uh, they are uh, frequency tuned and uh, progressive. But uh, that's all. Everything is not the point. The, the the real point at the suspension is the geometry, and we have uh, many people now know the uh, geometry bracket for. Uh, for the for the, uh, instead, instead of a long arm kit in the front, and we have a geometry bracket in the front and in the rear also, and uh, this makes it uh, you can't believe it how uh, how stable it is. So why didn't they do something like this at the factory? Was it expense? Is this an expensive thing to do? It sounds like I mean geometry doesn't sound like it's it, it it's more like math and making sure things are the right size. Yeah, it's not so easy to develop a, a system like that uh, because you also need the, uh, the the clearance under the car, and uh, it it was a lot of work, and it's also many many parts uh, what makes it really expensive. So um, the whole kit is uh, in the states. I think it's around about four thousand oh, okay. dollars. The whole kit. It's a whole kit included everything. There is no option, and. Uh, and it works great. You know, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's going to cost you more. But if you if you sell the whole thing, nobody's trying to piecemeal it because they're going to piecemeal it and it's not going to work right. And that's just going to be uh, look bad for you guys, like you didn't do it right. And really what it was was somebody messing up the design. Yeah, and uh, also um, there's... Uh, Every little part is, uh, is is made so great. So um, also the, uh, the balls would you use. So... Every little, little part, the, the bolt would use the uh, zinc plated. So, like the, uh, like from the factory, uh, I think there is no other manufacturer uh, manufacturer of uh, suspension kits who uses only zinc plated uh, bolts uh, with a suspension kit. And um, uh, the shocks would we use, they are not uh, bought from from a shock uh, company. We made it by our own. We we tested it on a dynamic rig. Uh, so we are absolutely for one hundred percent sure that it works fantastic uh, on and off. So the shocks that you sell, that you guys develop, this is part of the kit. You don't sell the shock separately. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
we we think that a, a shock has to come with a kit. So uh, it's nonsense to buy a kit and then uh, to buy a shock from another manufacturer. Um, it has to get developed. That's together. nice. I like the way that's up. <clears throat> like you say, it's it's expensive, but you know what you're getting, and you should be getting a a, a good product if because. It, it, all these all these things were designed to work together. Now, um, because of this, is this something that is user installable, or do you guys recommend or require a, a shop installation uh, to make sure everything's done properly, installed properly? If you uh, if you know something about the mechanic of your car, then you can do your own. So you don't need to go to a to a shop. Okay, to, good. To do it, yeah. So. Uh, I'm sure that's go running through people's minds like, oh my God, it's expensive. They want to make sure it's done right. And uh, yeah, so sometimes that's a, a bit of a turnoff. I don't know about you, but I find a, I find it very hard to find anybody that can work on my vehicle that cares as much about my vehicle as I do. Um, you know, it, 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 I mean, and, and I don't blame them. It's just, it's just a job for them. But whatever I work on my vehicle, uh, I'm doing it because I, I need it. I want it done and I want to make sure it's done the way I want it done. Uh, there's been a number of times I've found people yep. doing things that they didn't read the instructions, they didn't do it right, and damn it, I might as well do it myself. Yeah, you have to know there's uh, there's nothing to weld, there's nothing to cut, there's nothing nice. to flex. Uh, it's, it's just a bolt-on kit, and uh, even there's a really a whole suspension system, um, but it's uh, only maybe to drill something, but. It's it's a bolt on kit, so uh, nothing to weld or. Uh, so I like know uh, this happens a lot with lift kits. They'll say that it's a four and a half inch lift or a two inch lift, and it's not a two inch lift. It, it may be three and a half, four inches uh, when you put it on there, and it really depends on the weight and everything that you have on on the vehicle that you're putting it on. But what kind of lift, actual lift, are you guys seeing from this four and a half inch lift, like on a JLU? Uh, our kit is a four and a half inch uh, suspension. No, no more, and uh, and it works uh, really with the uh, 39s because uh, wh why do you want to lift a car? You you only want to lift the cheap because because you want to uh, drive mm -hmm. bigger tires. And uh, but um, I don't know if you know, but uh, honestly to say, the most of one and a half inch suspension they, they cannot handle 39s. So um, all ones does, but it's not higher than four and a half inch. So it's. So um, now one of the yeah. things that uh, I think could be argued, a 39-inch uh, tire, especially like on a Rubicon or any rig with lockers, uh, on a Dana 44, mm -hmm. uh, is that getting close to exceeding the limits of the Dana 44? Because I'm thinking 39-inch tires and a 4.5-inch suspension, it might be time to go with uh, different axles. In my opinion, you can use 39s with the standard axles. Um, you should use your brain. But, <laughs> oh, uh, come on! <laughs> I think, but I think it's never a mistake when you go off road. Well, good. I mean, I'm glad because so, you, you guys, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you, yeah, especially in Moab, you, you know, the people uh, who want to go up on a, on a rock and the and the tire is is, is turning and it starts and, bouncing. And yeah, on the, <laughs> that's rather, yeah. You shouldn't do it with uh, with the ninth, but uh, also not with uh, 37 or 35. So. Yeah, it, but it but I mean, from the because, research and the design no, that you guys so. did, you should be fine with the standard yeah. Dana forty four axles that come like on the the Rubicon or even the the Gladiator because the Gladiator only comes with forty fours front and rear. So uh, yeah, yeah, the JL, but the JL, you have to think about the JL has a a wide axle, so it's a very very long uh, axle shaft, uh, and uh, it, uh, it's a, a lot of more flexibility in the, uh, in the axle shaft than with a short axle. So uh, it, there's more, uh, a way more possible. Okay, so I, I want to make sure everybody's clear. You guys are in America as well, selling these uh, the all your products, and we haven't even touched on all the products yet. Uh, you're selling these products in America, so you don't have to ship it from Germany. You don't have to, to, to get on a boat and go over there and get it and bring it home with you. You can buy it here. How do you guys handle sales? Uh, in, in the United States. Well, we have our web shop here. It's Bavarian.com. And uh, we have our, uh, our sales guys here. We have two people here who, uh, who manage all, all the business in the States and uh, do a great job and uh, want to get tested. So you can order it here and get it delivered, uh, the suspension kit or the wheels. And uh, so l l that, that's great. We'll get, uh, we'll do more about that here in a second uh, when we wrap up. But uh, uh, you guys don't just sell wheels 
and suspension lift. You mentioned clearancing tires. You guys actually sell fender flares as well, don't you? Right, yeah, we do. Um, we have uh, three different styles of fender flares. Uh, very popular, uh, finally, is um, our uh, extenders. Uh, they look like the Rubicon fenders, um, mm -hmm. the high fenders. They're from fiberglass and they are 38 millimeters or one and a half inch, uh, inches wider. And uh, it's, it's good for the necessary tire coverage. Not, not very important for you guys in Texas, but also <laughs> it's very important for Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, California because they, or, some or places the require the tires to be fully covered, right? I mean, I think it, even uh, in Moab, where we're getting ready to go, uh, they require uh, mud flaps, which I'm not going to have mud flaps on my Jeep. But yeah, so yeah, it just really depends on the uh, the, the local uh, governing authorities. Yep, you're right, yeah. So um, you guys do something with uh, recovery in, in as much as a D-ring. What? Tell me what's special about this D-ring that you guys sell. Well, um, yeah, the be beginning was because uh, we have been the first uh, exclusivity dealer in Europe for AEV, American Expedition Vehicles. And um, we still sell a lot of uh, parts from that brand. And uh, we made uh, the whole uh, program, we, uh, we made uh, TOV certified. And it was a long time ago. Uh, it was on a JK with the, with the front bumper. And uh, they have um, uh, the possibility to, uh, to mount D-rings under, the, uh, under the, uh, the bumper. And therefore, we decided to, uh, to make special D-rings. Um, what we what you can use and uh, they're extra strong and uh, they're isolated so you you don't have the clack clack mm -hmm. uh, noise uh, when you drive your car and yeah that was uh, really so tell me it. what is uh, this thing it doesn't have like the standard uh, thing that you uh, take the pin out or you t twist it with your fingers uh, it looks like it has some hex or Allen head uh, bolts that hold yeah. things in place. Exactly, yeah, it's, it's fixed. And so, I mean, if you wanted to, to put something through here, do you have to have it where it goes through the ring, uh, threaded through? But you can't take the ring off. The idea is the ring stays on the bumper. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So you can do... And I was going to challenge you here because I didn't. I saw them in black, but I, I, I went a little further and I see you got it red and gunmetal. So as long as the red's there, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's the best setup. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's just a minor thing, but I, I, I do want to cover uh, what you guys have. We mentioned uh, the various things that you have, I mean, the fender flares, and I could tell those things give a lot of upper tire clearance, and that's another thing you want to make sure that you do, although with a four and a half inch lift, you probably don't have to worry about it. Uh, oh, yeah, fender flare extensions, an inch and a half. Uh, yeah, I see that. Uh, and, uh, uh, oh, uh, tell me, what is the, I see the camera relocation kit. Where are you relocating the camera to? Uh, again, what is uh, you question? have a camera relocation kit. Where are you moving it? Yeah. I would assume you're. This is the Rubicon <laughs> camera that's on the front, uh, and uh, so if you, yeah. If you if you use a, a, a another kind of bumper in the front, um, uh, then sometimes you have the problem that uh, you cannot see anything in uh, in the screen of your car because because the camera is in yeah. Uh, you in can the see the winch. Now. You can see the back of the winch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> but sometimes you want to yeah. see something more and. And therefore, we we made a relocation kit. That's uh, that's correct. Yeah. So you can uh, you can mount it in in another direction in, uh, the, in the front wheel. So the middle the middle section of the front wheel um, from the vehicle, what is not equipped with a front camera, comes with the kit, and then you can bolt it on in the position. So there's a lot of places it. that you can move it to and get the best view possible. Is is what I'm taking from that. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's I can, right. and I can well imagine somebody spent the money on uh, getting the Rubicon with that. They made other modifications, and they go, "Well, this is useless." So that's a, that's the way they can get around it. Yeah. Um, all right. So now uh, let's uh, let's move over to the. Uh, I was going to say the body. I, I saw something here earlier for the Gladiator, and I think I've seen it on your screen. For you, you guys that don't know, we also have this on YouTube. So uh, they have a nice uh, uh, TV in the back showing various products. But you guys have like a rack system. Uh, for the Gladiator, correct? No, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. No, I just saw it, so I thought you had it. 
the, no, the rack system what we offer is uh, is only for uh, made for the RAM. Ah, and, uh, okay. It was re it was released two years ago, and the time was too short to make it out for the Gladiator because uh, the Gladiator Gladiator will, uh, will leave us in the market, you know, and uh, that's the reason why you didn't. Uh, yep, didn't I see it here. For, so for this is for it's it's the D, uh, DTX rack uh, for the RAM fifteen hundred. Uh, 5.7 inch bed. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the Ram. Uh, we already mentioned that since this is a Jeep talk show, but people do have Ram trucks out there. They do have more than Jeeps. I don't understand it personally, but uh, people do. So uh, what all do you guys have for the Ram truck? And is it just the Ram 1500? Well, for the 1500, we also uh, offer wheels, of course. And uh, what we also have is uh, the DTX rack. And also uh, uh, the hardtop for that. Uh, the hardtop is a, a pretty nice thing because it's um, modular. So it's uh, the different parts. It's uh, the left uh, window, the right window, the, uh, uh, the um, rear window, and the top. And uh, you can use one of these parts or everything. Uh, then you have a completed hardtop. And, uh, and you, uh, you, you, you bolt it onto uh onto the rack so um then you have a rack and a hardtop at, uh, at the same time and that's the biggest difference to all the other um, manufacturers in the market very cool now uh, i did notice earlier that you guys have a winch mount and uh i thought it was interesting i was like oh yeah winch mount that's fine you get the the the, the oem steel bumper and it'll fit that but you guys this thing fits more than just the the jeep steel bumper right yeah well uh, the reason for the but the winch mount was um, we we sell the Mopar front bumper, the original one, what you what you get in the U.S. market, the Rubicon. But uh, it's normally it is not allowed in the European market. So uh, the Rubicon in Europe also have a plastic bumper, um, but we got it TIF approved. So uh, we have a pedestrian safe cover uh, developed for the Mopar front bumper. And so we are now we are um, we are able to to sell it uh, as an option for uh, for the chairs, and um, also we uh, we offer the AEV front bumper, and uh, yeah now we wanted we, we wanted to, to we, we didn't want, we didn't want to have a, a winch winch mount for uh, Mopar and for AEV in stock, so uh, we developed our own ones, what fits now for Mopar and for AEV. So uh, it makes it possible for our uh, dealers that they uh, have uh, the Mopar and the AEV bumper in stock and only one kind of... Uh, yeah, that's bumper. very handy. Also nice for you guys too, because you don't have to come up with something different, different parts and all the rest of that crap. Um, so make sure I understand this correctly. You guys cannot have steel bumpers. Uh, in in Germany, mm -hmm. you can only have the plastic one. Yeah. So, does that also mean you can't exactly. put a winch on the front? Um, yeah, you're not allowed to, uh, to use winch yeah. because that that wouldn't be that wouldn't if be pedestrian friendly when you smack them. They shouldn't be on the road. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. No. What we did is we uh, we developed a, a cover. It's a uh, uh, two, two inch thick foam, and uh, we tested it with a crash test, uh, actually. And uh, now all the pedestrians are safe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Even the fake ones. You've seen the dash cams, right? Where they, they run up to the stop vehicle and they throw themselves on the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the funny thing, the thing is, if you have a, a, a Jeep with a four and a half inch suspension and bigger tires in it, and, uh, and, and bumpers, the front bumper is in uh, that abnormal height, and uh, you, you hit the pedestrian, um, okay, we have a cover. In the, uh, in the moment when the cover uh, or the bumper hits uh, the pedestrian, nothing happens. Well, nothing is uh, maybe a little bit too, too much. Serious, right. But then, but, but then, uh, in the, in the test, um, he will he will go under underneath the car, and uh, the bad thing at the exit, uh, it, it doesn't have a pedestrian safe cover. So <laughs> at that, that, that point, yeah. Mm. So what you guys need yeah. is a, a combination air horn and uh, the uh, what do you call those things? The 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 bags, the airbags. You need airbag on the front. So right before it hits, it honks the horn, and the airbag de deploys. And it pushes the pedestrian out of the way. Of course, it'd probably be at such force it would sling him into the oncoming traffic. 
Uh, I, I understand what they're trying to do there, but come on. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure you've so seen on uh, you have to, you have I'm, yeah I'm, I'm sure you've seen on social media and stuff where a Jeep gets involved in an accident whether they rear into like a, a Honda Civic or somebody hits them and they hit the, the rear or front bumper and they're the customized bumpers and the Jeep just drives away uh, th- that's not happening mm-hmm. I think it can still happen but I think it's less likely to happen with the Jeep plastic bumpers so uh, I, I hate that aspect of it I mean I don't like the idea of the other vehicle being totaled but you know uh, I'm more concerned about me. I mean, I definitely don't want a pedestrian to get hurt, but uh, the chances of the pedestrian being in the wrong, I think are higher than the vehicle being in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think they should pay an ultimate price for that, but I just don't like, I don't like limited choices. Uh, I I like being able to do what I want to do with my vehicle. It is, uh, it is, it's actually pretty difficult to meet uh, different laws. So the law in, uh, in the States is absolutely different to the law in, uh, mm-hmm. in Europe. Uh, not even in Europe, also in, in Japan, in, uh, in Australia, they all have the pedestrian um, laws. And uh, the funny thing is, the Americans say, the American law says, um, the most important is that the guys in the car uh, are right. safe. But uh, the other law says the uh, the persons out of uh, the car, the, the others have to be safe. So, uh, and what we uh, tried and what we got is um, that we can keep everybody safe. So um, you have you have the uh, the steel bumper and uh, the the guys in the car in the jeep they are safe. But also you have uh, the the foam uh, on the front bumper uh, what what keeps the pedestrians safe. So it's uh, it's very it's it's not so easy like, like it sounds because the tests are oh, very yeah. difficult. I can imagine. Um, yeah. but and I would imagine too, and and you don't have to agree or or or, or uh, go go on with this uh, this subject, but also too, I, I get the feeling that sometimes laws uh, are kind of a, a feeling, and uh, whenever you're going through testing, uh, you may have problems because that feeling of we want the pedestrians to be safe, they may not want to pass the test, or they might want to be more picky about uh, that test passing than they would normally be just because of the, the, the overall thought process that's going on in the government. And uh, I know that happens over here, or I suspect it happens over here, and I, I would imagine it happens in, in any government. Anytime people are involved, we're all the same ultimately. So, uh, But I can well imagine that's a very difficult process and a very long process to go through. Yeah, it, it, it is very difficult to, uh, to meet it. Um, because the, the tests... Uh, I don't know what, uh, what 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 a kind of people can can make a test like that because <laughs> yeah they, uh, yeah you have to, you have to imagine um, uh, they they say okay um, we we make a, a lower leg or an upper leg test it depends on uh, what the height of the bumper is and then we have to uh, to throw it with uh, with a speed of forty kilometers per hour right. onto the car onto the position and um, and you have to, uh, to care for it that, uh, that the test will pass. So it, it, it's not mm-hmm. really easy. So in the future, all vehicles will, will be made out of uh, Nerf material, that spongy material that they make toys and stuff out of. And uh, the only problem is you can't drive them in the rain because they just soak up all the water. <laughs> Get too heavy to drive around. <laughs> all right. Well, you know how the kids love the social media. I'm sure you guys are on social media just because you're in uh, in Europe. You're not uh, immune to uh, the social media thing. Where can uh, people find you or the uh, company information? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't mention the website information. Uh, and uh, so it's b a w a r r i o n dot com. And is it Barrowan? Barry one? Say it for me. I'm not saying it right. Bavarian. Okay, so again, b a w a r r i o n dot com, and you'll find this on the show notes uh, for this episode. So you can just uh, look for this interview episode, and uh, you can get that link right there. So uh, where can where can we find you online, social media, so to speak? So you can also find us on Facebook, and you can, you can also find us on Instagram. Uh, wherever you want to find us, you can find us. And for uh, to, to, to keep the name in your mind, uh, uh, so I explain what we think, what what, uh, what the name says. It's Bavor- uh, the Bavarian says, a Bavarian ah, warrior. So that makes sense uh, to me. Yeah. 
I just see those that mix of letters, and I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> what is the what is the uh is it ORZ? Did I say I think I said QRZ. There's an amateur radio uh website, uh and and, and that's uh, QRZ is one of the amateur radio uh Q codes, but that's O R Z, isn't it? It's O it, yeah, uh, Peter says uh yeah. it's O-R-Z. I saw that and I went, Oh QRZ, I know what QRZ is. I'm an amateur radio operator, so <laughs> no, no. O- yeah, O-R-Z. O-R-Z. And and that is a uh, a partner or a parent company or what is ORZ? Oh, the ORZ is, uh, is uh, the owner of the brand Bavarian. So it's a company uh, what stands behind gotcha. Bavarian. Excellent. All right, man, uh, Patrick. I... So ORZ, ORZ is doing business as Bavarian. Gotcha. Yes. So Patrick, thank you a lot for being uh, here. And I'm, uh, it's it's a lot of fun talking to uh, Jeepers outside of the country that is so cool jeeps really are universal yeah. and i like it that it's not just an american thing people get the jeep thing and it's all over yeah absolutely of course yeah you know it's uh, it, owning, owning a jeep is freedom and uh yeah until they, until they take that of away course. from us with sponge bumpers and uh uh, IFS instead of uh, front axles and uh, no more V8. Oh God, I just I don't like the way this is going. <laughs> and and I hope to absolutely. Meet you we'll have to get you in the Gladiator and uh, my my puny two yeah. inch lift, and you can uh, say, oh well, this is crap because of this, this, and this. <laughs> Uh, I, I wouldn't say it. I let, I yeah, let yeah, you yeah. Uh, all right, man. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate you being here, and uh, we'll have to get you back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, thanks again to Patrick of Bawarian. I think I've got that pronunciation down correctly. I, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm supposed to say pronunciation. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think I got that pronunciation down correctly. Uh, visit their website right now, Bawarian.com. That's B-A-W-A-R-R-I-O-N.com. Hey, coming up next week, Allison. Uh, you know Allison. We've had Allison on the show several times, and I got to meet her at EJS uh, last year. Uh, uh, but uh, she's not there this year, uh, but, uh, Allison of duck, duck Jeep, and, uh, you can actually go to official ducking It's a brand new website. They just started and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the Jeep Talk Show. I want to give a big thank you to our special guests for joining us today and sharing their knowledge and experience with the Jeep community. Thanks again to G tops for sponsoring this episode of the Jeep Talk Show. Find out more by going to gtops.com. Support the companies that support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. Meet me and, well, you better hurry because today's the last day I'm going to be there, uh, literally leaving uh, tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, But, uh, yeah, they're all day Friday, so depending on when you're listening to this. Now, if you're listening to this in 2025, you're shit out of luck. Uh, So meet me and the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator at EJS 2024 and you can see the G-Tops in person. Oh, and I should add, there, we, we have about like 13 listeners and guests and uh, team members all, all at uh, EJS this year. So, uh, yeah, you shouldn't have to go very far to find one of us. <laughs> we love hearing from you, our listener. Reach out to us via email, phone, social media. We use your voicemails on the show. So until next time, keep on jeeping, and we'll see you on the trails. Hey, Fridays are red. Remember, everyone deployed. Broadcasting since 2010. (laughs) You're my friend. You're my new friend.